Hello, everyone. Welcome back to part seven of lesson five of the TLDR of Life YouTube course. So if you haven't seen parts one through six or lessons one through four yet, highly recommend you watch those and listen to those and answer and think about those questions deeply and do the activity so far. As you're watching me, think about and build my life operating system version two. So without further ado, I'll continue on with this lesson of why do I believe what I believe about my career life domain. So let me share my screen here and get started. On April 2nd, 2022, why do I believe that my career should be an expression of myself? Why do I believe that my career should be an expression of myself? Because everything is an expression of myself. I think by definition, whether we like it or not, everything has to be an expression of the self. It's whether we like that expression or not that we make other decisions. But I don't think I always thought this as well because I've only started to fully understand myself in the last few years, starting with the end of my tenure at Cap Gemini. I had an assumption at Cap that you had to act a certain way, that lunch was a time to escape work rather than enjoy work. I believed that I had to not like my job and do things outside of it to get fulfillment. My beliefs have changed in the last couple of years, mainly working at 2U. I can make my own path. I can create my own legacy. Hmm. I think watching enough things like that to be part of my own mission had a part in shaping my beliefs. I think starting to set goals, intentions of what I wanted to do, who I wanted to become helped me move along that path. Doing things outside of work opened me up to how I can express myself. What about my childhood? I don't think I saw many role models who lived that out of doing what they truly wanted to do. I didn't have much interaction with adults with any depth, TBH. It was very superficial or talking about my current school trials and tribulations. Everyone I saw pretty much worked at a corporate job and probably in IT. There wasn't much interaction with non-Indian adults really outside the context of school. So most of the time, it was school-related convos. I don't remember any of the conversations, but I remember the things that were through extracurriculars, the things that didn't fit into the normalcy. We remember with more vividness things that are different. We notice the outliers. So how do I make things so different that there's more memory of it? Have so much more of a different experience with things we do that more of them stand out over time. It's like perceived value that Alex Hermosi has been talking about. Make it one of one. Such a unique experience that they can't not remember it and feel it. The thing is school made me feel like one of many that one, that anyone could go through my experience. And probably someone has had 75 to 80% of my experience, at least through high school and even college. I have a random diagram below showing that. So we feel like we have different paths, but it's the illusion of false choice that we have. We all end up at the same checkpoints of elementary, middle, high school, college, job. Anyone who strays too far away is not on the correct path, quote unquote. I think it stems from a concept of one-to-one -one with time. Like we think time is a linear function, this one-to-one -one mindset again, that because we've progressed from a quantifiable point in the past to a point in the future, that is the only reality that we can have. That anything that doesn't follow the rules of time doesn't fit into our notion and understanding of the universe. That's why it's tougher to believe in the subconscious or the unconscious, because are you in the past or are you in the future? But that's a false question we're asking ourselves. Usually anything we're asking with an or is usually answered with a yes, because it's all of the above. We're always in the past, current, and future simultaneously. They are just different ways we quantify the same reality. Why else does it seem like history repeats itself? That's tougher to grasp if we have a linear thinking of time, because how can something here of 1800, for example, be very similar to something here in 2022. So what if we think of time as circular then? How would that look like? Uh, I actually think it comes to a sphere because a cone or cylinder or purely a circle are too flat or too discrete. With a sphere, 
Any point can be the beginning or an end. And no matter how you orient it, it's still always the same. Plus, if we believe everything is a microcosm of the macrocosm, then Earth itself is a sphere. Side note, balance is indeed nothingness because the Earth has so much pressure pushing and pulling from all directions. But it's just suspended there, seemingly. Acting like there's nothing when you view it from a closer vantage point. But taking a farther perspective, it has tremendous velocity. It's a great example to see how it can to see how it can seem like you're doing nothing or feeling any imbalance, but still progressing fast towards something. Even the distance of the planets can be symbolic of types of people. Some people's passion and purpose br burning so bright like Mercury and Venus. Some people's not burning bright at all or enough like the gas giants. But Earth simply balanced between it all. But digression aside, back to time here. So we can look at time as linear and convert it to circular. So looking at our lives, we have two endpoints, birth and death. The general arc of our lives follows a bell curve or normal distribution curve. If we were to graph the distance of the radius or diameter from one endpoint to another on the sphere, then the graph would look like a normal one, roughly speaking, converting this line into a graph. But that's the assumption that time is linear. What if we assume that time is circular or spherical? Then things will repeat in our lives from the moment we're born. The pace at which things repeat themselves will get faster and faster until a certain point happens, until a certain point perhaps, and then start to slow down like this fear as it continues to progress through the... Okay, so what the hell kind of bullshit am I speaking right now? What is the time of function of then? Um, quote out there that says, there's only one law, the law of karma. Intentions are just the Western way of viewing karma. So the clearer and more purposeful your intentions are, direction and speed, the greater the velocity that your life moves. Is that why we can feel momentum? Is that really when your intentions align with the results? Think of it like a shape. So from here, I voice recorded, um, but I haven't transcribed it yet. Um, but I have pic pictures, drawings that I have, if they make any sense at all. So I think this integrates with the who we are equation of the cylinder with volume equals pi r squared height. And then time and intentions are how we progress through that. I have all the building blocks of something here, but it's not expressed clearly enough here. I want to clean this up and integrate when I talk about it to folks. I guess clearly not enough here. <laughs> so even reflecting on this post, it's another meta moment. The question was about expression of the self. And like my truest self right now, I said a lot of words without actually saying anything. Lots of ideas without any cohesion, but it's all gonna make sense soon enough, I presume. Um, so here are, um, here's that first diagram with elementary, middle school, high school, college. We think we have all these paths, but really they just keep converging to the same points. So it's the illusion of false choice there. Um, this is random stuff here with the drawings, but then it makes sense in my head. It, but essentially, if you view time and intentions here as like, if time is circular, it's keep going around and around and around and you keep progressing through time. And depending on different variables, some things may seem slower like this and then faster or just slower the entire time, uh, just depending on different contexts and variables there. So that's what I was trying to relay I'm going to spend more time fleshing this theory out in the future. <clears throat> next blog post, next journal session. Why do I believe that we should have the same mindset on Mondays as we do on Fridays from April 9th, 2022? Why do I believe that I should have the same level of energy and excitement on a Monday as I do on a Friday? I believe that because every day is created equal, the same amount of time for everyone. Time is energy. So I'm letting something else other than myself dictate how I feel. Same with weather. Sunny should mean same mindset as stormy day. Now that doesn't mean do the same things on the weekend as you do on the weekdays. I think it just means do different things that help you achieve balance on different days. Hmm. What if weeks are the middle level of the metal metaphor? The microcosm is the day. People spend the majority of the time of their adult life working from morning to evening. 
and then fitting in activities to balance their life for the rest of the day. Then they spend the majority of their life working and then backloading balancing activities in retirement. So the hours to days, days to weeks, and years to life comparisons are all like this. Work hard, quote unquote, for the first 60 to 80% to enjoy the next 20 to 40%, if you're lucky, if it's not a greater disparity than that. What about the gap in here to bridge with the weeks to year comparison? Even that, we have a majority of our holidays at the end of the year. When someone says the holidays, it's pretty much always implied to mean from Thanksgiving to New Year time frame, and even more specifically, the last one to two weeks of the year. Again, being in the day-to-day -day for 11 plus full months before taking one month a bit easier, 87.5% working for 12.5% relaxation or balancing activities. Obviously, many generaliz generalizations here, but the similarities are striking across all the time periods. What if we extrapolate it to the next level beyond years to life of lives to divine? Like, I don't even know what to call that highest level. Universal time, cosmic time, divine time. So that means we'll spend 70 to 90%, I increased it here, of our collective human lives, lifetimes, struggling, suffering, working hard to achieve life balance, moksha, bliss, for the final 10 to 30% of the time. So the question is, when is this 10 to 30% of time coming for humanity? Well, I don't think this is something I need to quantify. So let's just let the universe play out naturally. So many things we do focusing on the small picture for the majority of the time and forget the bigger picture. We spend the fleeting gratification of money on unhealthy food earlier in life and we'll deal with health consequences later. Everything is, let me deal with the repercussions of my decisions later. And when, we, and when it is later, we wish our past self knew and acted differently. So the earlier someone can get clarity with their bigger picture, the more purpose they can live the majority of their life. So how do we change this mindset? It doesn't actually matter on which timescale you start here, whether that's your individual days, weeks, or years. Affecting one will impact the others naturally. Hmm, side idea, imprints database that translates across different variables like time. So it's easier to change just one thing and it'll have downstream consequences across those variables. Then when we stack them across variables, you can grow exponentially, not just linearly. Um, back to this. So how to quantify exponential growth? We think let's change this one habit so I can get this one result, but that's linear growth thinking. Hmm, is the rate of questions arising the potential that we have? And our growth is actually the realization curve. The difference between the possibility curve and realization curve is the growth potential. When the curve gets steeper and steeper, it gets closer and closer to infinity, like x equals 1. There's a picture below. So when we actually say someone has infinite possibility, this is a way to quantify that. Society has flattened this curve from a vertical line to an exponential to a linear. Like growth has to be a linear process is what we've been taught now. That's what society has structured for us. I think partly because we kept asking why. The basis for deductive reasoning, science, etc. By asking more why, we thought we were answering more integral, math reference here, questions, but we were just limiting our infinite possibility. So then, how do we start realizing our infinite possibility? No more why. So then, is it that vert so then it is that vertical line. Hmm. Even when we say exponential growth, what that implies is that there is a limit somewhere. But if we have this, there's a picture below, there's no limit. So we're setting our own limits. These are limiting beliefs quantified. When in actuality, the limit does not exist. As we progress across time, if we stop at a point in time, where we are versus what we think we can be is what we think is the ex gap of exponential growth. But even thinking that implies that there is a gap between who we are and who we are becoming. The only difference between the two is time, and time is not really a thing. By thinking that we're growing exponentially, that necessarily means that we aren't growing infinitely. It may be a necessary phase to get to infinite possibility realization, but we're actually limiting ourselves when we say 
exponential growth. So there's the gap between our, our possibility, a growth curve going, the possibility curve going up and up, the realization curve here, and then that's the gap. And this is like infinite possibility curve here with a vertical line because it has no y, basically. And yeah. So a couple of deep topics today. Um, hopefully that made sense. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are following along, if at all. Maybe you're watching this in a couple of years. Who knows? But thank you for watching. And I hope you are spending time going as deep as I am because this is taking months. This is still only the second question of my first life domain. I have I forgot, like five, six life domains and there's six questions. So you can imagine how long this course is actually, not, not even this course, this journey for myself is actually going to take. So I hope you're invested in this as much as I am. I hope you're enjoying the journey of me doing this as well as if you're doing this, enjoying the journey for yourself. And I will see you in lesson uh, five, part eight, I believe, in the next video. Thank you and have a good one.